let's start with our first project. The project is about an art competition. The participants of this art competition must be 18 years or older and less than 25 to be eligible to participate in the competition. So you must develop a program to take the individual's age as an integer input and output whether the individual is eligible or not to participate in the competition. It is such a simple program. Let's see how to program. First of all, let's see how to get an input value from the user. The input function is used for that. Each function ends with a pair of parentheses. The input function converts the value entered by the user into a string. But we want an integer input in this problem. So, we must convert the input value into an integer. We use the integer function to convert the input value into an integer. The value needed to be converted into an integer must be enclosed inside the pair of parentheses of the integer function. So, we enclose the input function inside the integer function. Now, let's see how to assign this integer input value to a variable. First of all, we define a variable called age. Then we use the assignment operator, that is the equal sign, to assign the value to this variable. Now we can call the integer input value using this variable age. According to the problem, for the participant to be eligible, the age of the participant must be equal to 18 years or older and less than 25 years. So, we use the conditional statement if else at this instance. If the participant's age meets the required conditions, the screen will output that the participant is eligible. If not, the screen will output that the participant is not eligible. For the participant to be eligible to participate in the competition, Two conditions must be met. One, the participant must be 18 years or older. And the other one is the participant must be less than 25 years. Only if both the conditions are satisfied, the participant will be eligible to participate in the competition. Let's see how to program this. First, we start with the if statement. Then we define the conditions. Now we can call the participant's integer input value using the variable age. The first condition is that 
the age must be 18 years or older. So we use the greater than sign and the equal sign after calling the variable age. Then we insert the value 18. Now we move to the second condition. But because both the conditions must be met, we use the AND operator after the first condition. The second condition is that the age must be less than 25 years. So we call the variable age once again. Now we use the less than sign after calling the variable age. Then we insert the value 25. Now both the conditions are defined. We use a colon at the end of the conditions. Now we must define what must be done if the given conditions are met. If the given conditions are met, the output must display you are eligible. So we start the next line with an indentation and use the print function to output a value. We insert the string you are eligible inside the parenthesis within inverted commas. Now we define what must be done if the given conditions are not met. We use else in the next line. And end the line with a colon. In the next line, we use an indentation and we use the print function with the string you are not eligible inside the parenthesis within inverted commas. Now let's run the program and test the program with some integer inputs. First, let's input 70. The program must output you are not eligible and it outputs the same. Next we'll go with 18. The program must display you are eligible and so it does. When 24 is input, still it displays you are eligible. Now we will input 25. Now it displays you are not eligible. So this is how the program works. Let's now move on to our second project. This project deals with a glove production factory. There are six production plants in this factory. 
it is the duty of the production supervisor to find the total glove pairs manufactured on the previous day. The number of glove pairs produced on the previous day in each of these six plants is entered as the input separated by spaces. You must create a program to calculate and output the total glove pairs manufactured on the previous day. So let's see how to do this. In this project, we need user input. So first of all, we define a variable called numbers. Then we assign the input function to the variable. The number of glove pairs produced in each plant on the previous day separated by spaces is the input. As the numbers are separated by spaces, the input function must remain as a string. So there's no need to convert it into an integer input function because of the presence of spaces. If there were only numbers without spaces, then there could be a necessity to convert the input function into an integer input function. But in this case, it should not be done. So, when six numbers are input, separated by spaces, what must be the output? The output must be the sum of these numbers. So, we need to find the sum of these numbers. But the numbers also have spaces in between them. So, first of all, we must remove these spaces. We use the split function to remove these spaces and arrange the numbers in a list. So just after the input function, we insert a full stop like this. Then we use the split function. Inside the pair of parentheses of the split function, we must define the separate type inside inverted commas. In our case, the numbers are separated by spaces, so we must insert a space within inverted commas inside the pair of parentheses. like this. Then when we insert the relevant numbers separated by spaces as shown, then the numbers will be displayed as a list when the split function is used. Like this. After we use the split function, the numbers are arranged in a list and have no spaces. But the numbers are in the string format. It is not possible to add numbers in the string format. 
we must convert the numbers to integers. For that we use list comprehensions. Each and every number in the list is converted to an integer with the help of list comprehension. So we define a variable called integer list. Then we use list comprehension. List comprehensions are enclosed inside square brackets. Integer x for x in numbers means each and every item in the list numbers is converted into an integer. So we can see the difference between before using the list comprehension and after using the list comprehension. Now if you run the program with the numbers separated by spaces and uh, if you click enter you can see here 99 is inside inverted commas but here there is no inverted commas 150 all the numbers yeah. are inside inverted commas and others are not inside inverted commas the numbers are inside inverted commas means they are strings so when you use the split function for an input function then the numbers will be just converted to strings but if you use list comprehension you can convert those numbers to integers after converting the string list to an integer list we can find the sum of these numbers for that we use the sum function So we want to find the sum of the integer list. So inside the pair of parentheses of the sum function, we put integer list. So we want to display this sum in the terminal. So we enclose this sum function inside the print function. like this then we can use several numbers separated by spaces to check the sum so this is what you want to program let's now move on to our third project You want to move from your current city to a city far away. You have to travel across a number of cities in your journey. You know the number of ways in between two consecutive cities. If the total number of ways in between two consecutive cities is input separated by commas find the total number of ways that can be used to reach the destination for example let's say there are five ways to travel from your current city to the immediate next city and four ways to travel from that city to your destination city 
then for each of the five ways there are four ways so the total number of ways to reach the destination city would be the product of these numbers that is the total ways would be 5 multiplied by 4 that is 20 so let's see how to use python to code these kind of problems first we specify a variable called numbers then we assign the input function to get user input to the variable numbers we use the split function to split the input and the numbers are separated by comma so we insert a comma inside the split function now you will get a list of the numbers but the numbers in the list are strings we want a list of integers to find the product of these numbers so let's see how to use the map function to convert these string values to integers so first of all we define a variable called integers next we use the list function because we want a list of integers inside the parentheses of the list function we use the function map the map function has two arguments a function and an iterable the function in our case converts each of the strings in the list numbers to integers that is done by the integer function the iterable is the list numbers so we type the name of the list that is numbers the two arguments are separated using a comma the two arguments are inserted inside the parenthesis of the map function next we use a module called math but before using it we need to import it generally it is done first so I will type it in the first line import math next we use the print function to display the product inside the print function we call the math module then we use the product function inside the math module to find the product of the items in the list because we want the product of these integer items so the math module and the product function are separated using a period so inside the product function we specify the list of the items that need to be multiplied so we type the name of the list integers so this is how the code will look like It is our time to test the code. Let's say there are 5, 4 and 3 ways separated by commas. So the output must be the product of these numbers that is 60. So let's run the program and see whether the output will be 60. The program will display it. So let it be any big numbers like this separated by commas the program will display the product of those numbers now comes a yummy project you need 20 bananas 5 apples 2 pineapples and 4 papoos to make a fruit salad if 
the number of bananas, apples, pineapples and papoos available is input separated by spaces. Output the number of fruit salads that can be made. The number of fruits available are separated by spaces and input. So the input is a string. First, we define a variable called numbers and then we assign the input function to that variable. Next, we use the split function to remove the spaces and list the items. Now, the variable numbers defines a list. Remember that we insert the separator inside inverted commas of the split function. The separator is a space in this case. Next, we need to convert these string items into integer items. So we define a variable called available and we use list comprehensions. Integer x for x in numbers. So each and every item in the list numbers will be converted into an integer. Now we want another list with the required number of bananas, apples, pineapples and papos to make one fruit salad. To insert a list we use a pair of square brackets. Inside these square brackets the items are separated using commas. The number of bananas required is 20. Then the number of apples required is 5. Then comes the number of pineapples and papos required, which are 2 and 4, respectively. So each of these numbers are separated by commas in a list. This list is assigned to the variable required. What is the variable? The variable name is required. And that list is assigned to this variable which is called required. If we find the quotient after dividing each item in the list available by the respective item in the list required and find the minimum value of that list, we will get the number of fruit salads that can be made. So we define an empty list with the variable numbers. When defining an empty list, we use just a pair of square brackets. Next, we must define a variable called i and assign the value 0 to it. 0 is assigned because the first item in any list has the index 0. So there are four items in each of these lists available and required. The second, third and fourth items have 1, 2 and 3 indices respectively. So 
index is like a code about the position of that item in the list. Then we must use a loop to find the quotient after dividing the items in the available list by the respective items in the required list. So we use a while loop. That is while the value of i is less than 4 then only the loop must be executed. If the value of i becomes equal to 4, it must stop. So this is how you code it. We use a colon at the end of the statement while i is less than 4. Now in the next line, we must start with an indentation. In the next line, we will define a variable x. Variable x is the quotient obtained after dividing each item in the list available by the respective item in the list required. So, let's see how to code this. First, we insert the list that contains the items need to be divided. In this case, it is each and every item in the list available. So we insert available and just next to it, we insert a square bracket and insert i. i will define the index of each item in the list available. Next, we use two forward slashes. This is the symbol used to obtain a quotient. Then we use the list that contains the items that will divide the items in the list available. Then we insert required and then open a square bracket and insert i. Next, we must add the value of x to the empty list or we must insert the value of x to the empty list numbers. Now there is an empty list called numbers. Right? We must add the value of x or we must insert the value of x to that list numbers which is now empty. So how can we do that? We use the append function for that. In the next line starting with an indentation similar to the previous line we call the empty list by its variable numbers. Then we use a period and we use the append function to insert the items into the list numbers. Inside the append function we insert the item that needs to be appended. In this case it is x. Now in the next line, with an indentation similar to the previous line, we must define the increment of i. That is, after each loop is executed, by how much should the value of i increase? So in this case, it must just increment by 1. So we use an operator type called in place operators to shorten 
i equals i plus 1 by writing i equals i plus equals 1. Now in the final line with no indentation we must display the minimum value of the list number. So we use the minimum function coded as min inside the parenthesis of the minimum function. We insert the list numbers. Right? Inside the parenthesis of the minimum function we insert the list numbers and all these will be enclosed inside the parenthesis of the print function that is used to display the value on the terminal.